Hello, my friend. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Michael, and today I am excited to post what is the first episode of a series of interviews I'm doing where I reach out to wildlife photographers that have been a big inspiration in my work as a wildlife photographer. Uh, I'll ask them to come on board for a little interview about an aspect of photography that I find that they are particularly good at. We'll start with some general questions around their approach. We'll get some of their best tips and then I've asked them to bring a handful of their own favorite photos and tell us the story behind how they got those shots. And my first guest is Ray Hennessy, an incredible photographer who has been a big inspiration to me, especially within the last six months or so. His work is just beautiful and I think he's particularly good at having you know some creative angles that you don't usually see and I am very much blown away by his duck photography because that's something I've been doing more of lately and I've realized how extremely difficult it is. But uh, enough of me talking, let's see what Ray has to say. Hello Ray, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me man. Of course man, no it's a huge pleasure and I uh, really appreciate it and the idea here is I'm, I'm inviting uh, you know other photographers uh, to have a conversation, photographers that I find inspiring and whose work I often look at and admire and kind of go like ah. Yeah, I'm going to try to do that myself. So uh, I'm hoping I can share that experience with other people. And, yeah. um, and then one of the things I, I noticed with your work that I really like is the fact that you, you have a, a, a wide variety of subjects you shoot. Thanks, man. Uh, I think often also you kind of choose, uh, it seems you're kind of fascinated by species that aren't the kind of fan favorites, you know, like. Yes. Uh, and, and I really like that. I think that's awesome. And then one of the things I noticed uh, that I found really fascinating is how many incredible shots of ducks you have, and especially ones where it's clear that you're on the shoreline and getting them yes. on the water there. So, oh, that's just beautiful work, man. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. And um, kind of, I, I was wondering, actually, when I was looking at your work, is what's, uh, how did you end up, for example, with the ducks? How did that become uh, like a fascination for you? Yeah, you know what? Ducks was kind of the only choice around here in the winter. So ah, I, live, I live in New Jersey. And yeah. I mean, there are other things. Um, you know, most people that I know are into like owls and raptors that definitely show up yeah. in the winter. And um, we definitely get some like some sparrow species and you know, some other variety of stuff that come down. But uh, for the most part in New Jersey, in the lakes and down the, you know, in the ocean and the, the saltwater areas, uh, ducks just arrive, you know, tons of different species that show up in the winter. And, um, you know, they're just, they're beautiful birds. Yeah. You know? There's just the colors and everything. And um, I quickly realized the difficulty. Uh, yeah. Was, uh, part of the fun with them, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, yeah, it was kind of just, you know, lack of anything else that was really appealing in the winter is what kind of drove me towards starting to photograph them. Interesting. I wonder, I mean, it, it took me a little bit before I started really like noticing ducks and they, for, before they kind of also popped up on my radar. Yeah. I, I wonder why do you, what, what do you think kind of it, uh, is it just because they're, you, you kind of have a feeling that ducks are abundant or is it because when you think ducks, most people are just like, Oh, that's just a mallet. Or what? Yeah. I think that was part of it for myself too. In the beginning was I didn't, you know, when I, I, I wasn't a birder or anything before I, mm. I got into bird photography. So I was a photographer first, birder second. Mm. So for me, um, I had no idea the variety of waterfowl that exists, you know, mm. I, I didn't have a clue, especially the variety that show up in this area in the winter, you know? So when I started, you know, discovering like, oh my gosh, these are here in New Jersey. Like it just mm. seemed absurd, you know? And of course now I know, you know, there's way more variety than most people you know, would have a clue unless they're kind of into this sort of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, the other nice thing is in this area is they're accessible because there's a, you know, there's a whole set of freshwater ducks mm -hmm. and a whole set of saltwater ducks mm -hmm. and, and that sort of thing. So you know, even depending on where you live, you can usually, usually find something nearby, which is nice. Uh, uh, what got you hooked on the hood of Magenzas? All right. So um, first year, I move into a condo in southern New Jersey, and I... Um, I'd only been there maybe half a year, something like that. And um, at the time, my dad was into wildlife photography, so we used to go do bird photography together. Oh, interesting. And so there was a, a it, this was back before I knew much of anything. I was, you know, very beginner. Mm -hmm. And we went to, uh, always in this area, there's a, a real famous uh, national wildlife refuge that anybody, as soon as you get into wildlife photography, like that's where you go. And it's down the shore. 
Uh, so it's along the coast and it's managed by, you know, um, the, the people watching it there. So they manage different water levels in these impoundments. So it's great for waterfowl. Oh, cool. Yeah. And so you get, you know, tons of a wide variety of ducks down there, including hooded mergansers. So anyway, long story short, my dad and I go all the way down there. It's like an hour drive from where I'm living, go all the way to this national wildlife refuge. Not a great day. I think maybe I saw some hoodies like way, way out, you know, cause it's just like huge open bays and, and lots of space. And then I drive home that day and I'm driving by, there's like a little retention pond, you know, like mm -hmm. a drainage pond in this condo. I mean, it's developed all around it. Right. And so I'm driving by and I look over and there's hooded mergansers in that pond, <laughs> like right outside <laughs> the back nice. door. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Really? Like I just drove an hour <laughs> to go see them and they're right yeah. here. Yeah. And as soon as I learned that, then it was, all right, now I got to figure out how to photograph these birds here, yeah. mm -hmm. which became a whole thing. And, uh, you know, obviously I was able to figure that out. And, mm. and so, you know, having them in my backyard, and what's really cool now is I know I've learned their pattern so well. Like I know they show up like on clockwork, like second week in November. Oh. They're, they're here. It's like almost down to the yep. couple of days, you know, they show up that reliably. And then they're here at that pond until it freezes over. And then it, when it falls, sometimes they'll show back up. Not always though. But, uh, you know, I usually get a good, about a good month before it freezes up that I just have hoodies in the backyard. <laughs> oh, nice. Incredible. Yeah, yeah I think that the, 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 uh, they just look so cool. I mean, the males, I, I think that's the thing that, that kind of got me hooked is the first time yeah. I saw one, I was like, what the hell is that? Yes. Like, yep. they got this kind of punk, punk look. Totally. To them. Yeah. yeah they're and really, tiny, really cool. too. Yes, yeah. they are. They are really small. Yeah. So yeah. What, uh, what do you find uh, most difficult uh, kind of uh, in, in photographing ducks? Uh, simply the approach, you know. Yeah. Uh, so any wild duck, if it's a true wild duck, is just unbelievably skittish. You yeah. know, hard to get near, very scared of humans. Um, any movement sound tends to spook them. And they are, you know, there's a lot of bird species that I work with that are skittish, I would say. And, mm -hmm. you know, but they won't just entirely vacate the yeah. entire area uh, upon being disturbed. You know, they might be skittish and they'll keep their distance and they'll just move away a little bit, but you can kind of work with them, get them comfortable with you. Ducks, in my opinion, the ones I've worked with anyway, if they're true wild and not habituated to people in some way, shape or form, which many of them are, um, but the ones that aren't, like as soon as they're aware of you, just like, gone, Yeah, you know? Like there's yeah. just not even coming back. It's yeah. gonna be hours before they show up again. Yeah. Uh, so. The biggest challenge to me is just simply approach uh, getting close. And uh, for me, that has been making it so they don't have a clue that I'm there. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's kind of the conclusion I've gotten to uh, as well, because uh, I think probably there's a development with, with most of us, uh, also with, uh, when we're learning about photography and approach where you think you can go. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. and then maybe you walk a little bit slower down to whatever and then you get frustrated enough that you either quit or you go okay i gotta really rethink my approach yes here. correct so what would your uh, what's your overall kind of approach then uh, as far as trying to get close to them it definitely is different for different species and different habitats you know mm -hmm. so um my main approach with a lot of these ducks is to show up well before sunrise mm. and set up in a hide, you know, mm. uh, which for me, my, my go-to hide with waterfowl on the shoreline is just, I have basically, it's like a glorified camouflage blanket. Mm. I just chuck over top of me. It's mm. got an opening for the uh, camera lens to go through and then a screen mesh that I can look through. Right. Mm. So real basic and simple. And it lets me lay down prone, which is key, getting that low perspective. Right. Mm. I want to get as close to water level as possible. So, uh, my go-to method with most ducks that I photograph is to arrive uh, half hour to an hour before sunrise, get set up along that shoreline, post up, you know, be quiet for that first hour, and then either they arrive or they're already there. But I think most ducks don't have really good night vision is mm, my perception yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I've walked in on ducks that have been on a, you know, a lake or a pond in the dark and you can hear them move away, but they won't leave, you know? Um, and then like, for example, the hoodies that I work with, they don't stay on the pond overnight. They leave the pond to roost overnight and then they come back every morning, but they come back a half hour before sunrise. So if I'm set up there 45 minutes before sunrise, they don't have a clue I'm there. They show up, I'm ready to photograph them. Um, but it's interesting. I have, you know, some of the sea ducks, totally different approach, you know, okay, okay. like I'm not sneaking up on them so much. They're a lot more tolerant of people. It seems, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I can walk up in daylight, lay down, and then within 
10, 15 minutes, I'll have some of them coming in, in the, the breaking ocean waves, you know, yeah. those uh, other saltwater ducks on the bay side, back to the blind thing. You know? So it really depends on what specifically I'm going after. And that's been the learning process, right? Learning each duck, each behavior, yeah, yeah, yeah. new approach. Interesting. So uh, <clears throat> with the example you mentioned where you go down during the day and, uh, and lie down and then within 10 minutes they come in, is that, do you then pick a place where there are no ducks and you wait for them to come in or do you walk in and they kind of sk- uh, take off for a little bit and come back? Or Yep. Uh, so uh, have scouted multiple times, know that this is consistently a spot that they hang due to food source. You know, they're always, mm-hmm. so specifically what I'm talking about with that kind of approach are mm-hmm. um, long tailed ducks, mm-hmm. eiders, stuff like that, that hang in the surf, you know, okay. yeah. um, with those ducks, uh, you know, scoters, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I was just working with them this past week mm-hmm. and, um, you know, I found the spot where they are hanging out a lot. So I know they're feeding there, they're yeah. diving down for food yeah. and I walk up, they all vacate the area. And yeah. then within, it honestly, it's usually within 10, 15 minutes, they're back again, you know, uh, okay. because I'm just laying down motionless. Yeah. Um, Interesting. If I were to do that with the hoodies, they would yep. have left that pond. I wouldn't see them all day. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Same approach, totally different result. Okay, cool, cool. It's interesting what you said about night vision because one thing I've noticed, and I'm, I'm not sure I'm right. This is still just kind of a hypothesis I'm, I'm testing, but it seems to me that when, uh, if I'm down by the, I, yeah, I live close to the ocean, so it's mainly uh, on the ocean that I shoot ducks. Okay. And um, if I'm down there at about sunset and I approach them with the sun to my back, Mm. it seems that they don't really see me as well. And I don't know if that's because I, my, my, my hypothesis is that it has to do with it, that I'm backlit and they can't really see that sure. well than when I'm backlit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it certainly may be the case. Yeah. It, 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 it's just, I tried a couple of times where I was sure like, okay, I'm going to try and they're going to fly off. And I'm like, oh, I was surprised at actually how close I could get a nice. night down because of the sun in the back. That's very cool. Uh, so we talked a little bit about your approach and how to get close to these uh, really, really skittish birds. Yeah, but, um, yeah. And, and awesome insight, man. And then uh, I was wondering, do you have some, uh, a couple of overall uh, tips that you could kind of, you would give people who are interested in? in sure. Doing? Patience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is it. I mean, of, yeah. all the, of all the birds I photograph, yeah. maybe not, let me, maybe not all, yeah. of the majority of birds yeah. I photograph, yeah. ducks require the most patience for me, you know? Okay. okay. Uh, it, okay. It's usually um, all but... A handful of species of ducks for me are uh, hide photography, you know? Mm, So it is is me hiding, picking a spot, laying down, and just playing the patience game, you know? Um, I increase those odds over time because of how much time I've spent down with these ducks watching their behavior. So that's the other tip, right? So patience to begin with, and then that patience leads to knowledge of the species. Mm. So, you know, this like I just said a little bit ago, right? The same approach doesn't, that works perfectly for this species may not work for this species. And actually the same one approach for this species may work at this spot and not in another spot, mm, yeah, even yeah, with the yeah. same species. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's yeah. down to like the location and the species yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, my good friend, Scott Keys photographs yeah. hooded mergansers on yeah. a river and oh. his approach is to go in the afternoon because mm-hmm. he just simply waits for them to swim down the stream because they, kind of move, <laughs> they, <laughs> they move yeah, back yeah. and forth down mm-hmm. the stream. Right. So he's not going to bother with the get up early, kill an hour, you know, in the dark, just on the off chance that one might swim by once it's light enough. He's just mm. like, I'll just go there in the afternoon, post up, you know, and wait for one to swim by and, and hope I get lucky. So totally different approach, same species, you know? I see. Interesting. Yeah. So I, I think probably, um, I, I imagine that people are a little bit kind of uh, hesitant or, or, um, scared off by the idea of hide photography for the simple reason that they're like, Oh, I got to sit there for hours and hours. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you, and it is hard. Cause I, I find oh, that sucks. too. I get impression. <laughs> yeah. Sucks. Yeah. But do, do you have any tips for what, what do you kind of uh, do you meditate? What do you do when, when, when you're sitting there? Just to kill yeah, time? definitely. You know, um, in the beginning, especially when it's dark, if there's nothing to, to look at, you know, um, yeah, just some, you know, uh, self-reflection, some mm. meditation can yep. be great. You know, just really taking in the sights and sounds mm-hmm. uh, sort of thing. Um, I, honestly, there's there's totally times where I'm so bored. I'm like, all right, I'm going to start scrolling around on my phone just yep. to kill yep. time. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yep. done that. Mm-hmm. But one of the other things I notice is it's very rare that I'm laying next to any body of water where there's nothing going on. Like nothing. Yeah, to what you mean. There's yeah. always, you know, 
insects in the summer or, hmm. uh, you know, at least in the winter when we're talking with ducks around here, right? So there's always some kind of animal or some other bird, hmm. a sparrow making noise, hmm. or there's just something around to watch usually that usually gets my attention hmm. enough to occupy it, to, to just be patient yeah. or, you know, like, um, for example, the, the bufflehead when I photograph hmm. them, right? It's a wide open bay, hmm. you know, tons of space, but I can always see those ducks like way out there. So mm-hmm. it's still just like, all right, I'm going to watch my way out there, see where they're going, that sort of thing. Um, but I got to say, man, it's it, hide photography is a gamble, you know? And yeah, in order to do it, to start, even to start doing it, you have to be ready and willing to accept that I might go out and sit there for two hours and not take a single photo. Yeah, no, I, I've kind of arrived at the same uh, conclusion because, uh, and it's, it's I, I don't have the, the kind of mental stamina for it every single, every day, but correct. Yeah. But, but I think also once you've tried it and gotten some good shots, you kind of see the light because yes. it, to me anyways, it's, it's really part of it is that it's, it's so uh, fascinating when you see the absolute natural behavior, like you yes. just don't know you're there. Yep. Uh, it, it's, that to me is really, really fascinating. And um and then, <coughs> sorry, the other thing I think that, that uh, it, it is the waiting game, like you said, and it, it will pay off at some point, I find. Yes. It's just you yes. put in a ton of hours. <laughs> yes. And I think maybe it's also reframing it in your head a little bit because on the other hand, you could also easily walk around for three hours and not see anything. So True. Yep. Yep. But usually it's just a little bit easier to yeah. be walking, right? You know, versus yeah, yeah, just yeah. the lane there. And the other thing that I noticed in the beginning with that mm-hmm. kind of photography, even even if it was just me laying on the shoreline, even without the camera, right? And just trying to do the patience game and just hoping they don't see a lot of movement and they'll come close. Uh, it always seems like they're over there, you know? Yeah. And so, oh, I know. Oh, I'm going to move over there, but now they're where I was, right? Yeah. So yep. Yep. Yeah, making that decision of yeah. I'm going to go to this spot and I'm not going to move yeah. no matter what yeah. and just play the patience game. Yeah. And it's either going to pay off or it's not, you know? But when it does pay off, it's worth it. Oh, it's incredibly good advice, and I love that you brought that point up because that's man, I oh, that's my dilemma. So the over there times. kills me every time. <laughs> and as soon as you move, it's 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 over, man. And yeah, I, yeah. Oh, you I, start I, it over. Yeah. yeah, and I keep doing it. I keep doing it. And uh, the amount of times where I've moved, and then literally ten minutes later, they're right where I was. Yeah, and you're just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I just had five yes. minutes more patience. Yes. Yeah, good point. Yep. Very good point. Yeah, and and that's that patience is you know sometimes it's like. You know, you, you, you feel like you've been sitting there an hour and you look down at the clock and it's like, oh, it's been 15 minutes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, it really does. Sometimes it takes an hour, an hour and a half before they come in. But then when they do, it's like, oh, all, all that was worth it, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the payoff is worth it. <laughs> do you have any uh, advice as far as, um, because I, I, I agree 100% that it's, uh, it's like it's, it's uh, of paramount importance that you get low enough. Yes. I, I just, you know, I think, you know, all these classic bits of advice where you're like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And you kind of don't do it. And then you do photography for long enough. And you're like, okay, yeah, we have to stick to the basics. Yeah. It, it the basics. But one of the things I find when I'm, I'm uh, lying there flat on my stomach is it can get really uncomfortable quite quickly. Yes. Like your neck is bent and I, oh, totally. my arms go to Elbows, sleep and stuff. Shoulder, yeah. Yep. Do you have any, uh, what's, do you have any advice there from, from getting Yeah, actually, I mean, recently I started using, uh, mainly for uh, clients, I've been bringing them out. Uh, I have like some really thick yoga mats from mm-hmm. Amazon that mm-hmm. I got. Um, and that's been, uh, that's helped with the, the comfort level of okay, yeah. laying on, you know, frozen yeah. ground and stuff like that. So that's really nice. Plus yeah. it's, they're waterproof, so it keeps you dry, okay, which yeah. is also helpful. Um, and I am a, a big believer and shooter of a right angle viewfinder. Mm. So it's an attachment that goes on the back and instead of looking straight through the viewfinder, it it bends up 90 degrees. So you're actually looking down. So, you know, if you figure you're laying prone up on like your, you know, your elbows, you can look right down on it. But the key with that is number one, it takes a while to get used to it. It's really awkward to shoot. Mm -hmm. And then number two, there's no, if I anticipate that I might be shooting any kind of action. So if I anticipate that I might be photographing some ducks flying in or something like that. Oh, interesting. Ditching it. It's Mm. not going to happen because trying to track a bird in flight, especially a fast flying duck, Mm, mm. this right angle viewfinder is just, in my experience, near impossible. So uh, when I am shooting action with ducks, then I ditch that right angle viewfinder. But if I know I'm just shooting like my hoodies, you know, Mm -hmm, like I'm just going to be shooting some portraits of them kind of slow, slowly swimming around. It's totally easy to follow. And I actually find it uh, an advantage because 
Um, if I think about I'm laying prone, right, and I'm facing out this way towards the water, well, if the duck is way over there and I turn the camera this way, well, I have to physically move all the way up here to get my eye down in the viewfinder. Yeah, yeah. With that right angle viewfinder, it doesn't only stick straight up, it can actually rotate. So I can point my camera this way, have the viewfinder pointing back ah. towards me and look at it. I can actually be facing this way and shooting out that way, like down to the side. So I can actually get a wider yeah, yeah, range yeah, yeah, yeah. of shooting without having to move. So oh, wow. in that regard, it's an advantage. Oh, I never thought of that. Wow, yeah. great. Uh, awesome, uh, awesome insights and, uh, and tips here, man. I've already yeah. learned a lot. Yeah, sure. Uh, so let's, uh, I, uh, I asked you to bring some photos, so I'm, I'm yeah, curious yes. to see what you got there. So um, yeah, sure thing. Let's have a, a look at some of the shots here, and then uh, I'd love to hear a little bit of background on how you got the shot. Yeah, definitely. Um, I kind of put them in a little bit of a sequence here, mm -hmm. so uh, based on like ease of approach, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so you can see this uh, tundra swan here. Can you see the screen? Sorry. Yes. Yeah, you can. All right, cool. Um, yeah, so this tundra swan was one of these where it was just kind of a lucky day, right? So I was out actually sitting in a blind for hours for a kingfisher, believe it or not. Yeah. And um, I did get the one, fo one photo of my kingfisher. He mm -hmm. flew in, landed on a perch in the falling snow uh, for about 30 seconds. I got two shots and then he left, right? Nice. Gone. So I knew once he left, he wasn't coming back. So yeah. I get out of the hide and I'm walking along and all of a sudden there's this flock of, uh, it was like six of these tundra swans, right? Oh, nice. Yeah. And so they're big birds. They're skittish. They were keeping their distance, but they're mm -hmm. not going to totally take off. I literally walked right down to the shoreline, plunked down real quick and took the shot, you know? So mm -hmm. this was one of those, um, oh, I see it over there. Let me do what I can to get my low perspective, mm -hmm. walk up and get the shot. And uh, I think it actually worked out better with the scenic nature because it included more of that falling snow and stuff. Oh, like totally. That, you know? Oh, it's yeah. a, a lovely environment shot. I love it. And uh, snow is just, snow makes everything really cool too. Do yes. you, uh, one of the things I've noticed and I've heard other people complain about is it can be difficult to focus uh, if you're using autofocus in snow because it seems the camera gets confused. What a yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, if it's heavy snow, sure. This snow was thankfully just way light enough that it was a non-issue. Um, but yeah, I mean, in heavy snow, the only option at that point would be to just switch to manual focus yeah. and you know, try your best, which yeah. I, I think maybe I've ever had to do that like once. Mm. You know, it, it, I've usually not been out and we don't get that much snow here, unfortunately. So, <laughs> mm. um, but yeah, so this was like, you know, easiest waterfowl shot to get, right? Just walk nice. up and get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So next thing, hooded merganser, right? I kind of already described what I do with these guys. Oh, that's beautiful, so, man. I love that shot. Yeah, wow. thanks, man. And so this was, um, you know, arrive an hour beforehand, uh, yeah. you know, take the 10, 15 minutes to walk down to the shoreline yeah. spot, which I've shot literally dozens of times uh -huh, because uh -huh. I've scouted this entire pond. Yeah. This is a spot where I know I can comfortably get low angle. Mm -hmm. um, I set up, uh, I actually set up like a camo drape in front of me. So I don't have to be in the blind, like in that camo yeah, okay. throw, mm -hmm. um, because it's just more comfortable to shoot. And it allows it to, uh, it allows me to move a little bit behind this camera. So drape. that like a square? Uh... Yep. Yeah, actually, I just take like a, uh, there was just a, you know, a, a dead branch. I yep. drape it across between, you know, like string it across two uh, trees that are there. Mm -hmm. And then I hang this like camo netting material over it, you know? Interesting, yeah. And then just kind of hide behind that and mm -hmm. the lens sticks out. That, mm -hmm. that, that's the setup to shoot this duck, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so I... Um, what you call it? Uh, just waited, and this was. Let's see, what time was this one? This was at seven thirty, I think. Sunrise that time was around six thirty, so you know, probably okay. just about an hour after sunrise. And the way it works is the sun was hitting this background, yeah. um, and then just getting the reflection of that that golden sunrise on like the just the brown background <sighs> turning yeah. like orange and yellow there. Jesus, so beautiful. Yeah, um, yeah. But you can see how alert he is, right? and mm -hmm. kind of already starting to swim away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is where these ducks are incredible, right? So he heard, he was swimming directly at me. Oh. And as soon as I took my first shot, yeah. he heard my shutter and then he perks up and then slowly turns and swims like slowly away. You know? oh. Yeah, which happens every single time I photograph yeah. these ducks, yeah. you know? So <laughs> I have to wait until they're in the exact range that I want to take my first shot. Yep. Have you, uh, I don't know, the, the, on the, I think you're using the D4? D4S, yep. Nikon, does, yeah. it have, uh, does it have silent uh, like tap? 
it has a quiet shutter mode, but it is not that quiet on this camera. Um, okay. And even using that is uh, is what I do. Yeah. Uh, um, and these birds still hear it. Yeah. So uh, that'll be the one thing I really look forward to when I eventually go mirrorless. You know. Yeah. Uh, but the D the D fifty uh, the D the, oh, sorry D fifty D eight fifty actually has a completely silent mode. If you, uh, oh, does it? If you use okay. tap, yeah. I was surprised. It's pretty cool. Uh, nice. It, it is. Uh, does that require a live view focus? Yes, you have to be on okay, live. Okay, yeah. So the live view focus on my camera is atrocious and pretty mm -hmm. much unusable. You know, so yeah, uh, I, I wouldn't even be able to use it if it did exist. <laughs> One thing here, uh, I. Th uh, that to me stands out obviously is I mean first and foremost I know how difficult it is to get a, a shot like this of a uh, herd in Bergansis, so that's incredible but secondly the colors and that that's one thing that's really difficult um, or basically impossible when you're shooting in the ocean as far as I can see because you don't have yes. that background reflecting so you're, you're dependent on uh, uh, atmospheric <laughs> nice colors or whatever coming yeah, from the sunrise light. on the water yeah, or something. yeah, totally. yeah, yeah. Yep. But uh, uh, so I, I can see, yeah, that's one of the big advantages of, 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 of shooting on a lake there. No, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Shot. I love it. Yeah. Very cool. Thanks. All right. Uh, next one. Oof. So, yeah, talking about the ocean, right? So uh, the next transition. step that I started doing is, uh, so this is taken in, a, in the bay, just on the other side of mm -hmm. a barrier island near the ocean, um, down the Jersey Shore. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a female red-breasted merganser. Mm. And um, uh this year is the first year I've really started doing it. I just mm -hmm. dabbled with it last year, but I started adding decoys. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. so, so that's the other thing that I've added now is mm -hmm. uh, using decoys. Mm -hmm. And that has been huge help in these mm. huge wide open areas, right? So mm. uh, I was at this spot to photograph Bufflehead actually. Um, but because I had Bufflehead decoys set mm -hmm. out, uh, this bird was comfortable enough. It felt there were other ducks hanging out there. Yeah. But it was able to swim right in to where I had the Bufflehead decoy set up. Um, and I did have some mallard decoys mixed in as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, she came swimming right in, in like the perfect light in the morning. And, you know, because it's a wide open bay, the background is, you know, very, very far away. So it just kind of melts away in the background, which is awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's beautiful with that background. I love the light at the top there and it's, it, it's, uh, it matches so nicely with her colors too. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So yeah. as, f as far as the decoys do, um, if people are listening to this, I could imagine maybe there are <laughs> people who go like, is it, I have an eth ethical issue or something with that. Do you, do, uh, do you have any considerations around that? Um, you know, I, for me, not really. I totally get if some people are mm -hmm. ethically against that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the reason I thought to use it was based on hunters, you know, yep. um, and that's what they've been using for, you know, who knows how many you know, years. Now they've been using decoys successfully to lure ducks in. Hmm. And, uh, you know, so already I guess I feel a lot better because I'm not actually shooting them to kill them. I'm just taking a <laughs> I was going to say it's uh, important so, difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I already feel better there. And, um, you know, uh, I have to say my experience with watching what these ducks mm -hmm. do when I decoy them in, I really do not feel like I'm disturbing them at all, right? So they're, they're literally swimming by out in this same bay, right? So I could see them you know, just out of shooting range out there. And then when they see the decoys, um, I, I actually also uh, mix in some uh, call playback. I mm -hmm. play the duck calls uh, mm -hmm. through a speaker and they hear the call, they see the decoys, they come swimming in, they check it out for maybe like two minutes, three minutes tops, and then they swim right back to where they were, right? Yep. Like that's the extent of the disturbance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yep. So, I, I mean, I have to say, you know, all the different things that I do to photograph birds, mm. you know, the, the key ingredient is watching the bird's behavior right yeah if the bird is disturbed a it's going to look disturbed in the photo yeah. which yeah. is not pleasing yeah. and b um it's just after a while it's not going to feel right you know yeah. like you're going to just agree. you're just going to feel like all right i'm really bothering this bird um, yeah i i agree uh, yeah. and and i think i, th I think in a, in a different conversation we talked about that then you know when you're doing something uh, if you're paying attention and you know your subject, it's, you know, you know when, when you're bothering them. And, yep. uh, you, you know, if you've done that once, then next time, you know, ah, I probably shouldn't do that. But the same thing, I, I, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, it's not like you're habituating them to anything because you're not feeding them. And also they, they don't no. know you're there like because Correct. you're hidden, hidden. So all they're doing yep. is they're swimming up and looking at these weird yep. Weird stoic, stoic <laughs> and, ducks. Just... And it's and they're not stupid, so they quickly realize these ducks yeah, are yeah. interacting with me. Yeah. See ya, you know. So yeah. it literally, lo it, like when you watch this happen over and over again, and I've been doing mm. it all season now, so mm -hmm. I have a little bit more experience with it. Mm. Um, it really is just 
curiosity. Like they're yeah. coming in to be like, oh, hey, you know, uh, mm -hmm. or the males actually, like the male buffle heads come into the other males as like a, a courting behavior. So they're yeah. trying to show who's boss. So they'll do a little like, you know, performance real quick. And when they get no response, then off they go, you know? Um, so uh, yeah, it really doesn't feel like it's a, a big disturbance. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I guess, you know, for, for those that feel like any disturbance, like am mm. I technically changing their behavior? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to deny that, but do I feel like it's uh, a problem? Uh, in my opinion, no, but for anybody that does, that's, I totally get their opinion. So mm. that's cool. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. And the reason I got these decoys is mm -hmm. for this shot. Ah, this is lovely. I in <laughs> nice. So, uh, and this shot is not complete yet. I still have the next level on this, which is okay. I want to get this shot mm -hmm. in this light. <laughs> yes. So, uh, but my idea uh, when I got bufflehead decoys was I wanted to get buffleheads, uh, a bufflehead duck flying directly at me nice. and dropping his feet like that. Cause they yeah. have these big, big, big pink feet and they drop them like brakes, you yeah, know, right yeah. when they're landing and then they water ski in. And uh, you know, I just, this was maybe like a week and a half ago. Uh, yeah. Finally was able to make it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, it was so cool when he flew right at me and I was just like lighting it up. It was like, yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it man. Like, it was overcast and I was like, no. <laughs> oh, I know the feeling. I mean, I've, oh, I've had a lot of similar shots, but not as good as this because like there's always something wrong with it and usually it's out of focus or something like that. But it's, <laughs> Yeah, I have plenty I, of those. Don't worry. I do love, uh, I mean, when they come in, it's so funny with those feet and it's just every time it looks like they're not quite. They're not very elegant landers, no, so it always looks all. like it always yep. looks like they're not quite sure themselves whether they're gonna make it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yep. Very yeah. cool. And also, and I can attest to the fact that the, the buffalo heads are extremely frustrating to shoot. Yes. Uh, it seems like they usually just stay just far enough away that yep. they get anything interesting. Yeah, and so uh, you know. I know, again, uh, my friend Scott has photographed them up on his, in the freshwater where they hang mm -hmm. out by him, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, he's nowhere near the shore. And um, his approach there is because these are diving ducks, he'll find them um, where they're not in a group, you know, so either an individual or maybe just a pair. And when they dive, he runs up a little closer and then stops and waits for them to come up. And then when they dive, right, he calls it like dive and dash. Um, yeah, yeah. And, you know, you're playing that game where you just try to move while the, the bird yeah. is under, make it to the shoreline, and then you get the shot. Yeah. Um, so that's a great approach there yeah. here. It is wide open. There are literally hundreds of buffalo head out there all the time. Yeah. There's no way you're doing that. No. It's not going to work. No. So the only approach here is yeah. to have something to bring them closer. Yeah. And that's where the decoys come in. Yeah, for sure. I, I've, I've been doing the, uh, what, what have you called it? The duck, duck and approach. What is it called? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been doing that lately too. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I, very good point there that you can only do it if you have one or two ducks correct and they dive at the same time because yep. as soon as you have other birds there they're, they're gonna You're done yep. yeah they're gonna call you out anyways <laughs> but it can be pretty effective with um if you can time it and and it seems oh, yeah. to, it seems to me that they dive for you know the same amount of time every time they dive so if you yeah kinda, you can time it yeah totally yep. and um i've been using that approach uh, lately with, with with some success but it doesn't beat the feeling of just lying there and then have the thing kind of come up because it's you know, that whole feeling of, I can't believe it's happening. Yes. It's, yeah. uh, it's quite incredible. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, and uh, one question for this one. Were you, uh, were you in the, um, in the bag hide here lying? Uh, um, yeah. You know, what? actually I had the, uh, the camo hide just laying over the camera because I was mm -hmm. moving around a little bit more okay. behind it to spin and uh, track yeah. them as they were coming in. Cause they were flying okay. all over the place. Yeah. Um, so I basically had like a camo blanket in front of me. I yep. just wasn't completely in, inside of it for this one. Yep. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Uh, yeah. And then I think I had, Oh, so I just wanted to show you these real quick. Yeah, this lovely. is, so this was the, the long tail ducks I'm talking about. So, and mm -hmm. this is, um, these are all some shots that are a project in the works, right? So, mm -hmm. um, I have this vision of a shot of these ducks, uh, at sunrise glowing in the, you know, the backlit glow, but, Sometimes what happens is you get them doing this. Yeah, 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 yeah. They go right over the crashing wave, right? Yeah, they like yeah, ride yeah. the wave. And so I want to get this shot with this light. Yes. You know? Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to say, like, this is the kind of thing. I went out the other day and I thought, yeah. like, I thought for sure, like, oh, I'm going to walk up and just get the shot. And then it was totally proven wrong. Like, it's so difficult to track these ducks as they, A, as they dive, and then B, as they're bobbing up and down in between the waves and I'm laying prone and trying to track them and I'm shooting into the light and squinting and like so much more difficult than I thought. 
it's uh i've i've i've, I've been shooting in waves also lately and it is it's extremely frustrating it's really difficult <laughs> yes. because yep. the ducks dive and they come up and you're already trying to do that and then you got waves crashing and all yeah. kinds of stuff and auto autofocus just all over the place that, that oh, is yeah. really difficult yeah yep. yeah yep. wow so. no i'm uh, i can't wait to see <laughs> when you get that shot because i'm sure you're going to get it very yeah, cool yeah 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 that's that's the hope anyway so <laughs> <laughs> awesome man thank you so much for sharing the um your yeah, shots sure here thing. man and yeah, uh definitely. That was really, really cool. And uh, thank you for all your insight. That was, uh, yeah, sure. I, I learned a ton and I hope uh, the audience here also got uh, some inspiration out of it. I hope, uh, yeah. first and foremost, that maybe we help open people's eyes a little bit more to dark photography. And then secondly, yeah. uh, a good uh, a reminder of some of the basics and also definitely for me, some new advice that I, I haven't uh, thought of before. So thank you so nice. much, man. Um, um, if people want to check out more of your work, where uh, what's the best place to go? My website is the spot, man. Yep. Yeah, so uh, rayhennessy.com. Yep. And uh, the, I post a new photo there every single day. Uh, it's the best place to view my photos because you can view them full screen, especially if you're on a big computer, yep. you know. Um, and it's just like the best layout that I have because I have full control over it. And it's where I share everything, you know. Yeah, so, and, and yeah. I, I wanted to just also as a testimonial kind of say that, <laughs> yeah, your, your website is awesome. And there's so much there. There's just tons. Thank there. you tutorials so I've, I've spent a long time on your on your website and uh, gotten a lot of inspiration from that uh, i wanted to uh, personally plug uh, the podcast oh yes uh, yes the wildlife Thank you, photo man. chat because, yeah because uh, i've been a fan of that from day one it's been so much fun and so inspiring to listen to and I, and thank you for joining on that man we yeah got thank you back on that yeah that was, that was a lot of fun man i really appreciate it but uh, uh yeah, yeah I, i'll recommend that to to anyone it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to listen to and then um also, I've I've uh, um, uh, gotten some lessons from you as uh, yes feedback yeah. and stuff on how to edit, which has been really helpful for me. I, I appreciate that. So I also wanted to let people know that you do all kinds of mentorship. You also do workshops. Could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I have um, uh, all all as you said, all kinds of workshops. You know, so uh, for people in the South Jersey area, or you know, some people in Florida. I'm heading down there for three weeks in a little bit. Um, I do run workshops in person and uh, my workshops may be just a little bit different than your average uh, bird photography workshop mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. I try to keep even the group ones are really really small but mm. uh, I also offer a ton of opportunity to do workshops with me private one-on-one -on -one. Mm. and uh, two reasons uh, mm -hmm. number one we get a lot better approach to wildlife right yeah, versus yeah, having sure. a group of four people yeah. walking around wherever trying to photograph yeah. birds it's a lot more difficult uh, so it um, doing this one-on-one -on -one thing with people, just having two of us out there allows me to uh, target a lot of different more species that might be more difficult to go after with a group. And obviously the benefit for anybody attending is they get the one-on-one -on -one experience, right? So yeah, it's yeah, tailored yeah, sure. to them and uh, they get to learn just that way. Um, but other than that, like you said, I do have the, the mentorship stuff, which can work with people anywhere in the world, you know? Um, you know, I work with you. We're obviously nowhere near each other, physically located. Um, but we can do stuff online and, you know, uh, really kind of just work to, to grow uh, your photography. And I really just have been enjoying doing that. And uh, it's been a lot of fun getting to meet people and just work with people and see the growth there, uh, which has been a lot of fun. So, yeah, yeah awesome, you, man. man. I, can, I can recommend uh, recommend your services. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> awesome, man. Thank you so much for joining today. Oh, you're welcome, was, man. Thanks uh, for having me, man. This was fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, man. Thank you so much. And uh, I can't wait to see uh, some more of your shots, man. Yeah, same for you, man. All right. <laughs> I'll edit that together somehow. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. I'll figure something out. Yeah. I don't know how to do these uh, outros. Just, just cut way. it. Just cut yeah. it off. <laughs> I think, yeah. In fact, actually put all this shit in there right now, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I will. I think yeah. I will. I think That's I will. usually the funnier thing. Yeah. Just...